right guys welcome to the channel well I wish I could justify keeping both of these motorcycles but I really should pick just one which one would you guys pick please leave a comment I'd be interested in knowing here we have a 2015 Yamaha FJR 1300 has about 4,000 miles on it bought this bike around a month ago wanted to try out a sport tour um, I've already done a ride and review of that bike <laughs> check it out on my channel if you want also did a review on the Delcovic trioval mufflers that's a separate video so do I keep this one or this is my 2005 Honda Goldwing it has only about 17,000 miles on it I've owned it about three years love it it's not my first gold wing this is my first sport touring motorcycle would like to keep both of them but just really can't justify doing that along with the Harley that I always keep so yeah um, I'll be doing a ride and review today of the gold wing like them both for different reasons the FJR it really is a comfortable bike for touring I could see riding around the country uh, on the FJR no doubt about it both of them of course have cruise control um, I would miss the tunes on the Goldwing not gonna lie it's got a six disc CD changer in the trunk that works flawlessly <laughs> So yeah, uh, you know, better wind protection, maybe a little more comfortable in the seat area, although this one's got the Corbin seat, it's comfortable also. Um, of course, this one you, with the pegs like that, you're going to ride with your knees more upright. I can stretch mine out on this if I go to the highway pegs. This has highway pegs too, here, but not near as uh, functional as the ones on this. Uh, you know. 200 250 pounds difference right guys more power less weight more agile um, I'm gonna have to say more comfort in this and more creature comfort you know again stereo right so I'll be doing a riding review on this one today put about 200 miles on the FJR since I've owned it I'm really liking it I'm telling you I didn't think I'd like it as much as I do. What's not to like about a Goldwing if you're going to tour, right? So, uh, going to be a tough decision. It. Let's set the cruise. 
was here and just a few mile an hour over the speed limit. So I gotta say this, I am getting more wind buffeting on the helmet on this bike than I did the FJR which is rather strange this windshield is not all the way up as you can see here but it's close it's I mean it'll go like a half inch more let's see if this makes a difference Yep, and I've noticed that before on this bike, you open that vent, you get less air sneaking around the back of your helmet. Of course, now you get more air in the face, but if I ride this in the summertime, of course, that's a plus, not a minus, but guys probably can't hear that. I, I know you, of course, I can feel it. But of course the ride is much pleasure. I mean, you know, you hit bumps on this, you don't feel like the FJR, but... And at this speed, the handling is not that much different. I mean, you know, it doesn't take much to turn a motorcycle when you're doing interstate speeds. But I am still surprised by the wind. I really am. And I'm getting buffeted pretty good. Let's open this again. That does make a difference, but not a bunch. Of course, I'm sitting more upright. Absolutely almost no weight down on my hands. Uh, put the highway pegs out. I mean, that's it doesn't get much more comfortable than that. Now when you do that, when you put your feet, feet out like that, the air travels up your knees and hits you even more. But uh, it is more comfortable, for me, it's more comfortable sitting this way. And then if you get tired of it, you can just, you know, fold them up, go back to the normal way. And I mean, this is what a Goldwing's for. It'll get rid of the miles in a hurry. You know, you'll be less tired whenever you get done. My 90 Goldwing, I once rode it. Um, how far was it? It was uh, about 1,100 miles, and the only time I stopped was for fuel, which was, on that bike was about, I think about, if I remember, about every 260 miles or so at interstate speeds. I was in the saddle for, you know, probably 18, 19 hours, and I'm telling you, I was sat in that seat every possible way you could. Uh, I did not sit in a totally side saddle, but just about everything else. And I had a passenger on the back with me, so just wanted to get home in a hurry, had been on vacation for a week, and just wanted to get back home. So rode it all day and all night. Um, this to me feels so similar to that 1990, which was the 1500, of course, the previous generation. Um, some things they changed, but other things are very close. You know, and roll on power, I mean. You know, this is a lot, has more torque than that FJR 1300, but if you need to power with that, just drop it down a cog or two, get the RPMs up and go, you know. Just different characteristics. Cruise control works equally as well in both bikes. Of 
course you can see more on this one because there's a much bigger um, I don't notice a huge difference in the amount of wind hitting my fingers or my hands but the FJR comes standard with heated grips this gold wing did not and I didn't put them on it in fact I haven't really added much of anything to this bike uh, this of course has an adjustable headlight you can adjust on the fly um, you know has the preload for the shocks all adjustable um, CB but this doesn't have it and I didn't care to spend the money on the module to buy it and if I remember right, it was I want to say like six hundred dollars or something after I looked it up once and I totally forgot about it because I knew I wouldn't use it anyway. Resume and Excel features work about the same on both. I don't know how far this will adjust the cruise. Oh, okay. It'll keep at 95 mile an hour now. My 90 Goldwing, the 1500, I think the max on it was 85. Because I remember being out west in like Montana where the speed limit sign read whatever is reasonable and prudent, which means go as fast as you want, just don't get in trouble. And I'm pretty sure it wouldn't set past 85. I was totally disappointed by that at the time. I mean, you know, look, this is this is what it's all about with a gold wing. I'll make a note on that. I like riding my gold wing on the country roads too, and I don't mind at all riding it in town. So, to me, that's not a big consideration. Like some folks say, you, you know, gold. If you're going to get on the highway, gold wing's your bike. Well, a gold wing is my bike, so I just want to ride around town also. Uh, great bike to go grocery shopping with because you got so much room to haul stuff back home and at the meantime you're getting about 45 miles a gallon doing it compared to my diesel truck which gets about 15 at five and six dollars a gallon for fuel depending on where you're at when you buy it so I, uh, I ride my bikes to do trips like that whenever I can whenever the weather is decent I think a Goldwing should come standard with heated grips because I'm amazed at the difference that makes. Having heated grips on that FJR, it just seems like it. It just seems like having your hands warm, that that warmth circulates throughout the rest of you. Sounds crazy, but it seems to be the case. These 1800s will get after it pretty good. By the way, I wanted to mention that the speedometer, as with a lot of Hondas, and I'm not talking just motorcycles, Honda was sued years ago because their speedometers were way off. They always register faster than they are actually going, and in this case, if you're doing 80 mile an hour, that's actually 74. In other words, if the indicated speed is 80, you're actually doing 74, so it's 6 mile an hour off at these speeds, and that makes the odometer turn faster. So if you've got a warranty on a Honda, your warranty is going to be up sooner than it should be simply because it'll rack the miles faster than it should, and Honda got sued by that years ago. Class action lawsuit. They had 
had to increase their their warranty like if their warranty had a 36,000 mile warranty I think in it, they had to extend it to like 39 something it was under 40,000 miles and it was well because their speedometers were not accurate now did they do that on purpose to get out of paying warranty claims who knows And the FJR was within two mile per hour of being accurate. So on the FJR, if you were indicated speed on the speedometer was 80 mile an hour, you were actually doing 78. Now motorcycles have always been notorious for not being accurate, but just wanted to make a note of that. So easy to ride, you guys. I mean, I'm no spring chicken. Still easy for me to ride, even at lower speeds. But you guys that were thinking about a gold wing, but thinking, you know, 900, 950 pounds plus the rider and the passenger, take one for a test drive. It'll probably change your mind. Self-canceling turn signals as all motorcycles should have. The FJR does not have self-canceling turn signals. These gold wings get hot riding them on, you know, you get up to that time that I rode all those miles, I started out from Texas and rode back home and it was 105 degrees in Texas that week I was down there and even out on the highway, man, you could feel the heat. I mean, 105 degrees is one thing, but then you get in an envelope behind a 1800cc engine, you're going to feel more of it. Clutch. Very easy. No problem. Two fingers. Always use only two fingers on my Goldwing clutch. Brakes, both front and rear. I can't complain about either one. Cornering, it's fun to surprise sport bike riders because they see a gold wing coming up behind them and then if you happen to be in a place with a lot of corners, they just keep the steady speed until they figure out that, hey, wait a minute, that gold wing's right on my rear tire. And then of course they speed up a little so that makes you on the Goldwing speed up a little more. There's no way you could ever keep up with a decent rider or even a halfway decent rider on a sport bike, but it is still fun to surprise them. Unless they've ridden one, they don't really know that a Goldwing can corner as well as they do. Uh, you guys that have gold wings know this. Anybody that's ridden one that's been on bikes for quite a few years, you know. And they do it pretty effortlessly. Here we are, 60 mile an hour. Got the cruise set. Fun at any speed is about what I'd say. All right, guys, turned off on to some back roads here now. Rolling through farm country. Can't take a gold wing on the back roads, huh? Too heavy. Yeah, right. This is some of the most enjoyable rides I've had on my gold wings. It's on the back roads, the two lanes, especially out west. All right, guys, that's about it for this review. Please leave a comment, you guys that have owned Gold Wings and you guys that have owned uh, sport touring bikes. Leave a comment. Let me know what how you feel about both of them. Really be interested in reading what you have to say. Check out my channel. I've got three playlists. Animals, motorcycles, tractors and equipment. Animals are from 13 years of trail camming and motorcycles. There's probably, I don't know, 18, 20 videos now I've got up there on there. Uh, a lot of Harleys, some Yamahas, Kawasaki's, this Goldwing, 
things like that tractors and equipment got re some reviews on some stuff snow blowers stump grinders tractors grapples just stuff that I work with around home so check it out and help me keep the channel rolling by subscribing appreciate you guys until next time adios